Hello everyone, in this video we will learn how we can rotate an array in place. That is, suppose we are given an array of n integers and we have to rotate it by k positions to the left with the space complexity of big O of 1, which means that we are rotating the array in place. So let's say this is the array of 6 integers given to us and the value of k is equal to 2. That is, we have to rotate each element 2 positions to the left, which means that the element at index 0 would be 3 because when we shift 3 two positions to the left, it comes out to be at index 0. Similarly, 4 will come at index 1 followed by 5 and then 6 will come at index 3. Now there are no more elements in the array after 6. So we will start taking the elements from the starting of the array that is we are moving in a cyclic way. So the element at index 4 would be 1 and at index 5 would be 2. So now we have successfully rotated our array two positions to the left. So taking the same array of integers, let's see how we can rotate it in place. Now for this array, the value of n is equal to 6, that is it has 6 elements. And let's say we have to rotate it two positions to the left, which means that the value of k is equal to 2. And as we have already seen, the array after rotation will look like this. Now the basic approach which comes to mind is that we keep track of every element and one by one shift each element k positions to the left. But if we do that, it will become hard to keep track of all the elements without using additional space. So instead, what we will do is we will divide the array into sets or cycles and we will shift every element in a set k places to the left. And when we are done with the first set, we will move to the next set and repeat the process. Now to understand what I mean by this, let's actually do it. So we start with the index 0 and we store the value at index 0 that is 1 in a temporary variable say temp. Now as we did before we will look for the element which should come at index 0 and that will be the element 3 because when we shift 3 two positions to the left it comes at index 0. So what we will do is we will move the element 3 to index 0. So now 3 is at its correct position in the rotated array. Now instead of moving to the next element we will directly jump to the index of the element that we shifted which means that we will directly jump to index 2 and now again we will figure out which element should come at index 2 and we know that if we move the element 5 two positions to the left it will be at index 2 so we will move the element 5 to index 2 which is its correct position in the rotated array and again we will jump to the index of the element that we shifted that is the index 4 now again repeating the process, the element at index 0 will come at index 4 but we have already changed the element at index 0 but remember that we stored its value in a temporary variable temp. So using this variable we will put the value 1 at index 4. That is the element 1 is now at its correct position in the rotated array. And now if we jump to the index of the element that we shifted, we will go to index 0 but we already have the correct element at that index. So this marks the end of our first set or cycle which is formed by index 0, 2 and 4. And now as you might have figured out we will move on to the next set starting at index 1 and again we will store the value 2 in our temporary variable and then we will see which element will come at index 1 and if we shift the element 4 two positions to the left it will be at index 1. So we move the element 4 to index 1 which is its correct position in the rotated array and then we jump to the index of the shifted element that is 3 and we know that the element 6 will come at index 3 which is its correct position in the rotated array and then again we will move to the index of the element that we shifted that is 5 and the element at index 5 will be the element which was at index 1 that we kept in our temporary variable so using the temporary variable we will move the element 2 to index 5 and this marks the end of our second set that is formed by index 1, 3 and 5. So by shifting elements in sets, we have successfully performed array rotation. So by now we know that we have to divide the array into sets and rotate each element in set k positions to the left. So to do that we will have two nested loops where the outer loop will run for the number of sets and the inner loop will be to rotate the elements of a set k positions to the left. So now the question is how we will find the number of sets? How to one by one shift elements in a set k positions to the left? 
and when to move on to the next set. So let's try to figure out the answers to these questions. Now we know that the number of sets will depend on the value of n and k and it will be equal to the GCD of n and k where GCD stands for greatest common divisor that is the greatest number which divides both n and k and we can verify this as for the previous example the value of n was 6 and we rotated each element two positions to the left now the greatest number which divides 6 and 2 is 2 which is equal to the number of sets that we had for that array so now let's take another example suppose we have this array of 9 integers therefore the value of n will be equal to 9 and suppose we have to rotate this array three positions to the left that is the value of k is equal to 3 now the gcd of 9 and 3 is equal to 3 therefore to rotate this array we will have to divide it into three sets and after rotation the array will look like this so let's take a variable i for the outer loop which will run from i equal to 0 to i less than the number of sets so initially i has the index 0 so now let's take another variable j to define the inner loop and at the starting of each set our variable j will be equal to i that is right now it has the value 0 now we have to shift each element in the set k positions to the left for that we have to figure out the element which will come at index 0 and we will calculate that using the formula a of j is equal to a of j plus k modulo n which means that the element at index j is equal to the element which is k positions to the right of j and we take its modulus with n so that after the last index we come back to the index 0 so that we move through the array in a cyclic way. So let's create a table for the value of i, j and taking another variable d which is equal to j plus k modulo n. We will break down the above formula for simplicity. Thus we can simply write a of j will be equal to a of t. So initially the value of i is equal to 0 and at the starting of each set the value of j is equal to i therefore j is also equal to 0 and as we used to do at the starting of each set we will store the value at i in a temporary variable therefore temp has the value 1 next we will calculate the index of the element which will come at the index pointed by j which will be equal to j plus k modulo n that is 0 plus 3 modulus 9 which is equal to 3 therefore d has the value 3 and finally the element at j will be equal to the element at d that is a of 0 will be equal to a of 3 and therefore we have the element 4 at its correct position in the rotated array now as we did previously we will jump directly to the index of the element that we shifted therefore we will make j equal to d and we will again repeat the process so again i has the value 0 but now the value of j is equal to 3 and the value of d will be equal to 3 plus 3 modulus 9 that is equal to 6 therefore our variable d now has the index 6 that is the element at index 3 will be equal to the element at index 6 that is 7 will now be at its correct position in the rotated array so now we will again make j equal to d to move to the index of the shifted element now i is again equal to 0 and now the value of j is equal to 6 therefore the element which will come at index 6 will be equal to 6 plus 3 modulus 9 that is 9 modulus 9 which is equal to 0 so our variable d now has the index 0 and as we can see we already have the correct element at index 0 therefore we have reached the end of our first set and here we can define the condition that for every set the inner loop ends when d is equal to i and in this case we will simply copy the value in temp at j that is a of 6 will be equal to temp and the value 1 will come at index 6 so this marks the end of our first set which is formed by index 0 3 and 6 and at the end of each set we will increment i by 1 to move to the next set so when incremented by 1 the value of i will be equal to 1 and again at the starting of each set we will make j equal to i that is j also has the index 1 and then we will store the value at i in our temporary variable that is temp now has the value 2 so now again we will calculate the index of the element which should be at index 1 
and that would be equal to 1 plus 3 modulus 9 that is equal to 4 so d now has the value 4 which means that element 5 will come at index 1 and we will simply do that by making element at index 1 equal to the element at index 4 therefore 5 is now at its correct position and now we will again make j equal to d to move to the index of the shifted element so again the value of i is equal to 1 and the value of j is now 4 so now if we again calculate the value of d it will be equal to 4 plus 3 modulus 9 that is equal to 7 therefore d now has the index 7 and we will shift the value at index 7 to index 4 by making a of 4 equal to a of 7 that is 8 is now at its correct position again making j equal to d to move to the index of the shifted element we have the value of i equal to 1 the value of j is now equal to 7 and if we calculate the value of d it will be 7 plus 3 modulus 9 that is 10 modulus 9 which is equal to 1 so d will now be at the index 1 and now as d is equal to i this will be the end of our second set and we will copy the value in temporary variable to the index pointed by j that is a of 7 will be equal to 10 so the element 2 will now be at its correct position in the array and we have completed our second set which is index 1, 4 and 7. So moving on to the last set by incrementing the value of i which will now be equal to 2 and at the starting of a new set the value of j will be equal to i that is 2 and then we will store the value at i in the temporary variable temp therefore temp now has the value 3 and again calculating the value of d which will now be equal to 2 plus 3 modulus 9 that is equal to 5 we know that the element at index 5 will now come at index 2 that is a of 2 will be equal to a of 5 which will shift the element 6 to its correct position in the array and now again making j equal to d we move to the index of the shifted element for which the value of i is equal to 2 and the value of j is equal to 5 so the value of d will be equal to 5 plus 3 modulus 9 that is equal to 8. So the element at index 8 will come at index 5 that is a of 5 will be equal to a of 8 which will shift the element 9 to its correct position. Now again moving j to the index of the shifted element that is 8 we have the value of i equal to 2 the value of j equal to 8 and as 8 plus 3 modulus 9 is equal to 2 which means that d now has the index 2 and now as d is equal to i this marks the ending of our inner loop after which we will copy the value in temp at index j that is a of 8 will be equal to temp which will store the value 3 at index 8 and we are done with our last set that is index 2 5 and 8 after which we have successfully rotated our array by 3 positions to the left so now let's implement this using c++ as we know for this program we will need the gcd function and for that I am using the euclidean function to calculate the gcd which I will explain in a future tutorial. So we start with our array rotate function which takes in as argument an array a its size n and an integer k that is the positions by which we have to rotate the array. So firstly let's declare our variable d i temp and j and we initialize d as minus 1 next we start our outer loop for i equal to 0 and i less than gcd of n comma k and for every set we make j equal to i and we store the value at i in the variable temp and then we start our inner while loop where we will shift the elements in a set k positions to the left for that we will calculate the value of d equal to j plus k modulus n and we will make a of j equal to a of d and then we will move j to the index of the shifted element that is d but before shifting the element we will check if d is equal to i which means that we have reached the end of our set and at that point we will break out of the loop and copy the value in our temporary variable at index j and we will repeat this procedure for every set i have linked the code for this tutorial in the description thank you for watching